Our next adventure takes us out to the schooner Charles A. King. The King rests in about 210 feet of water. Her foremast rises up to 130 feet and is usually the first thing you see as you descend. Following the mast down to the deck, we find the bowsprit on the deck. It's not broken off, but rather folded back onto the deck. Some schooners were built this way to allow them to fit through the lock systems on the Great Lakes. Dropping the camera through the hatch, we get a view inside the bow area. The King is another excellent example of a well-preserved wooden schooner. Remember, this ship has been on the bottom almost 125 years. The Charles A. King is a 140-foot schooner built in 1863. Captain James Glenn purchased the King on September 21, 1895. As luck would have it, only five days later, she was caught in a fierce gale off Point O'Bark, Michigan, and foundered. Her crew was rescued by the steamer E.C. Pope. The Charles A. King lay undisturbed for 114 years. In June of 2008, Captain Gary Vinay was given coordinates of an unidentified object on the bottom of Lake Huron. The information came from the Environmental Protection Agency's research vessel, Lake Guardian. The Lake Guardian had been testing their newly acquired side-scan sonar equipment as she sailed down Lake Huron when they stumbled upon the object. Captain Vinay gathered a small, select group of divers to investigate the wreck. As we swim aft, we passed by the capstan. The further we go, the more damage to the wreck we find. She must have hit the bottom stern first. At the very stern of the wreck, we see the transom has fallen away. This is the transom, now laying back almost parallel with the bottom. Getting under it and looking up, we find a star. Stars were often used as ornamentation on old ships, as they were believed to bring good luck and keep vessels safe. Even though the stern is broken, you can still see the ship's wheel sticking out in plain sight. Heading forward, there is a collection of artifacts along the pork rail. Please enjoy them, but leave them in place for others to enjoy.
Using the wreck's dimensions and the fact that she was a two-masted sailing ship, the group developed a short list of possible identities. She was finally and positively identified when the team found her enrollment number carved into a hatch combing. Swimming to the bow, we pass by the hatch combing that holds the enrollment number the team used to identify the wreck. It's obscured by zebra mussels now, but here's how it looked to the dive team in 2008. One number is 300, meaning the ship is rated for 300 tons. Next is the enrollment number, 5558, positively identifying the wreck as the Charles A. King. Finally, back at the bow, we admire the mast and rigging one last time as we begin our ascent. Hanging on the line decompressing, I wonder if anyone thought to bring a deck of cards.